Hi, uh, well I'm setting up a new ceramic studio for myself. It's my first ever studio, so I didn't really know what I needed, what kind of equipment I needed. But I did have an inkling that I would need a wedging table. Uh, that's a pretty sturdy piece of furniture which I can use to prepare clay or to um, dry out clay which I want to recycle. Uh, or to, um, to mix clay together um, in a, in a, on a surface which absorbs water. Because a wedging table is basically a big slab of plaster held in by uh, a wooden frame. And it's got to be quite chunky and sturdy because when you're, uh, when you're preparing a lot of clay, several kilos worth like, like I do, then that's a lot of force that you're applying to the table, so it has to be, um, to be stable. Uh, so I made one before, uh, a couple of weeks ago, three or four weeks ago, um, and it's okay, it's, uh, it's working, I can use it. Um, unfortunately my studio is quite damp, just in general the atmosphere is quite damp, and the, the area of the country I live in is damp, so things don't tend to dry very quickly, uh, including the plaster that the wedging table is made of. So that's a bit annoying, it's going to take a while before it could be fully, um, fully uh, properly used and, and absorb as much water as it ever will do. But it's still usable, it's still a nice flat surface I can use to, um, to prepare clay, which I'll show you in a minute. Uh, it's my first ever bit of DIY, I've never uh, really taken two bits of wood and held them together and, and, and uh, let them stay there, stay together. Uh, things usually fall apart for me. But I went online, like I do to learn everything, and uh, found some really great tutorials, videos about how to, how to make furniture, just in a crude way, nothing, nothing fancy, nothing, uh, and certainly no, no lovely carpentry, just something which will stand up to the kind of forces I want to apply to it and, uh, and look okay. Um, not like a, look ugly, but at least um, not disgrace myself. So yeah, so I did my first bit of DIY to make my first wedgie table, and uh, including mixing plaster for the first time in any quantities, uh, and that worked okay. It wasn't brilliant, but it was all right. Uh, the timing of that is pretty crucial, but we'll get to that later, I guess. So let me show you my first wedging table um, and so you can get an idea of what I'm trying to make. And as I say, I, I got the plans, I got everything from, from online. I didn't invent this at all. This is just me trying to follow somebody else's instructions, um, more or less to the letter. So let's see the wedging table I've made already. So there it is. There's the chunky thing. Uh, you get the idea of what it's, how it's made. It's a um, wooden frame and uh, it's not that big mine, it's, it's, uh, cause it's, uh, the studio isn't huge, but it's about, what's that, about 60 centimetres across, something like that, uh, maybe a bit less by, by 30, 40, 35. Uh, it's about two inches or five centimetres or so thick, the plaster, and it's made of, uh, the wooden frame is just one, two, and then at the bottom three identical frames which had just been screwed together and screw and then screwed into the let's see the frames screwed together there uh, and then screwed together into the legs and the legs are just very they're just square hefty chunks these are four inches ten, about ten centimeters diameter uh, on each edge and then we are and underneath so when it's turned upside down when you assemble the frame turn it upside down there's a wire mesh as well that I've created inside there. Um, that took some doing, uh, and then filled, the, covered, the, uh, put the whole thing on top of a, a mirror, uh, which is why it's the size it is. Actually, I just uh, I had to start with the size of the mirror that I had lying around, and what any piece of glass would do, or plastic, and then uh, put it upside down on that mirror and fill the void underneath with a mesh with wet plaster, which dried um, pretty well, and it's quite smooth and nice. It's, as I say, it's still a bit damp, but. It's good enough to use. Um, so let's just have a look at what I use this for, just to show you what the point of a wedging table is, uh, for me anyway, um, and then we'll have a look at how to make one. Here's the wedging table, here's my clay, a bit of porcelain, and this is just a wire to, to cut the porcelain. So I've, um, one thing I can do is, this is pretty soggy clay, it's just it's not very stiff, uh, it's probably been recycled, yes it has. Um, so one thing I can use a wedging table for is literally just to uh, dry the clay. So if I slam the clay onto this surface at a bit of an angle, then it turns into a slab. So you can see uh, the wedging table is taking a bit of hammering and if this were a, were a bigger piece of clay then it would be even more force. Um, it's, a, it's a little bit rocky on this, this surface, it's not quite smooth, but the thing is it's not really moving anywhere. So I need to be able to have that 
possibility. So I might just do that for a bit. Leave, leave my leave my clay just um, drying there a bit because right as this as this is happening, the the, uh, the plaster is absorbing the water from the surface of the clay. So I do that side. Then I might just leave it for a few minutes and turn it over. Do that, and uh, so again, still drying. Uh, and the longer you leave it, the drier it gets, but don't leave it too long. It's, uh, I've done that so many times, it's, it's, uh, it's very annoying when you come back and it's just a bit too stiff. Anyway, I'm sure I'm teaching you to suck eggs here, so just ignore me. Um, so another, the other purpose, the, really the main reason for having a wedging table for me, is to do, not, um, is to do wedging, which is this. So I'm cutting it in half, and then slamming it back together. And that's what I do for recycling clay. If there are some, uh, maybe some hard bits in this, or I just need to make the, the clay more homogeneous. So that's, that's what I call wedging. That's what I've learned to, to call wedging. Because the other activity that you do with a wedging table is to knead the clay and just get into some kind of slightly oblong form. That and then knead it, and this is what I spend most of my time doing on my wedging table. Let's just get it going. So I can already feel this clay is stiffer than it was just with that couple of minutes of sitting on the surface on the um, plaster surface. So, all I'm doing now, and it's familiar to everybody who's watching this video. Just in case, all I'm doing is trying to get all the air out of my clay, and it's a certain kind of movement. I'm just, um, I'm just uh, mixing the clay up in a kind of spiral motion. It makes quite a pretty shape, a uh, little sort of shell-like shape. Basically, we're just winding the clay up all the time, so that the inside gets to the outside surface. And then, if there's an air bubble in there, when it hits that plaster surface, it'll pop. That's the sound we love to hear. So I do a lot of this, kneading. And this is uh, why my wedging tail is so low. So I'm, this is important. Um, uh, it's a, it can be a big strain on your arms and your back and your shoulders if you get the height of your wedging table wrong. And I've, I've wedged enough on two high tables. You can see this workbench here. It's just a bit too high. And you spend all your time on your shoulders doing the kneading. Instead of what you need to do is use your trunk, your core. Um, so hopefully I'm doing this correctly, but I'm, let's see if I do it properly now. Um, when I'm doing the wedging, I'm trying to use my body weight to push down on my arm. This arm actually is quite uh, straight, so that I'm not I'm not pushing with my arm or even with my shoulder. I'm just using my body to drop down onto it like that. Um, Anybody thinks I'm doing it the wrong way around? Yes, you're right, but it turns out it doesn't make any difference at all. So uh, I don't think there is a wrong way around for kneading clay. Uh, I've got an argument about why that's so, but let's do that another day. So, um, yeah, so the height of the wedding table, I think, should be about, for me anyway, is if I put my hands by my side, just stand normally, put my hands by my side, then not with my fingertips up, if I just raise those my knuckles like that, just a bit below that. So maybe maybe where my first knuckle is, that's what I'm that's what I'm aiming for, my first knuckle of my middle finger. I can't tell if you can see that, but so about there, if I just drop my hands by my side. Which feels too low, it looks, looks too low, but that's the best way to um, preserve your back to do to be kneading. Um, so that's the that's the crucial height. So once you've got that height and you know how big the flat surfaces you've got to put the clay, the, the, uh, this table upside down on, like my mirror, which is there, then that kind of determines the whole thing, the size of the whole thing. Uh, and that's what you have to go on. So don't use other people's measurements for how high these things should be. Use your own body size. Uh, if you're much taller than me or shorter than me, then it'll obviously be different. Um, 
Okay, so and if, you, if it is too high for you, then just stand on something. Uh, but it's much easier if you're going to make one, then make it the height you need it for yourself. Okay, let's get on to how to make one of these things.